The Bitcoin price right now is at a very critical level. We have touched this over and over and over and over again. Trader Gareth Soloway explains his take on what's next. Bitcoin continues to struggle right here at the pivot point. And again, I've talked about this pivot point for months now as being a major level. We can see how, again, it came up, hit it, pulled back, broke above it, and now it's retraced into that level. As long as it holds this 60,000 level, Bitcoin can rally to 68. If it breaks and confirms, 52,000, maybe even 49,000 is potentially in play. And what factors for Bitcoin should we be looking at to determine what's next? Well, we know as of yesterday, one of the largest institutional Bitcoin holders, BlackRock and their ETF, they were selling. While the volume that was traded in one day was well over a billion, the net flows in the end were a negative 228 Bitcoin, about $14 million, not that much in the grand scheme of things. And looking in on today, although it is too early to tell, the time of recording, the trading day is not over, $19 million in pre-market volume traded with 37% as opposed to 28% being active buy orders. Again, in the grand scheme of things, not that much buying, just like not that much selling. It's a waiting game at this critical level. But zooming out and looking at fundamentals, this is nothing new. This market feels scary, it feels new, but the four year having cycles haven't changed. We're right where we should be. And the real Bitcoin bull market begins in two months. November 28th, 2024. Again, price is affected by supply and demand. Bitcoin is one of the only investable assets in history that we know the supply side schedule. The halvings are 100% baked into the code. And at this very same point in past cycles, actually, let's move it up about a month. In about a month's time, buying Bitcoin today is like buying right here, like right here, or like right here. When in doubt, zoom out and understand where we are. And actually for that exact reason, plus a little technical indicators I'll show you, but I'm in a short position right now. I know a lot of you guys use Margex. I'm a little down, but I'm actually going to close it. Now I know what you're thinking. Austin, what are you seeing on the day chart? What are you thinking? And for me, you got to go to smaller time frames. Let's go to the hour. And this is Bitcoin's price performance, again, in those same uh, resistance support bands. But what we'll notice is every single time Bitcoin attempted a breakdown, price went down, that was accompanied by less and less weaker volume every time, showing that the bears were weakening. So for me, obviously nobody can see the future, but I'm going to wait reevaluate link down below. If you want to follow along, check out Margex. And I do just have to react to this and comment on this. Many of you were sending this to me. Mark Cuban on an episode of Rug Radio with Farouk said this about meme coins. Meme coins work, right? You talk about those yourself. Like, you know, it but that's, that's just fun. That's just community, right? Yeah, exactly. But it's still a rug pull. Every single meme pull is a rug pull in the works, right? Because there's no real reason for it to stick around other than the fun of it. And to see, you know, when the token goes up in value, because more people came in, it's, you know, it's musical chairs, you know, you know, meme, meme coins are all just a game of musical chairs yeah i mean like a lot like, like a lot of the investments in general i find like is like musical chairs like you have investors i get in before after you know i could get sure. in. there's no question there's no question right but specifically in crypto it's like put a name slap a name on it get it out there tell everybody why it's going to be insane in my personal opinion especially if you watch the full podcast mark is a hundred percent right when he calls meme coins hot potatoes that's true in my opinion don't be the last one to sell. But I think he's wrong when he says every single meme coin is a rug pull in the works. Because to me, that implies intent of malicious behavior, especially from the team, which I don't think is always the case. I look at meme coins as just sort of mascots for the chain. If base does well in a bull market, I think the mascots, the top meme coins will outperform. But in a bear market, when the tide goes out, I think the mascots of blockchain, the meme coins, will underperform. Don't be the last to sell is sort of the unwritten rule. And breaking news for XRP, the SEC is appealing the federal court's ruling on Ripple, meaning the SEC is still attempting to classify XRP as a security. Or actually, I guess they just filed a notice of an appeal, 
meaning the SEC has until October 7th to formally decide on the appeal. CEO of Ripple, Brad Garlinghouse, commented, If Gensler and the SEC were rational, they would have moved on from this case long ago. It certainly hasn't protected investors, and instead has damaged the credibility and reputation of the SEC. While we'll fight in court for as long as we need, let's be clear. XRP's status as a non-security is the law of the land today, and that does not change even in the face of this misguided and infuriating appeal. So Ripple and XRP's battle in court continues, we'll know officially after October 7th. And what's new with Ethereum, and actually Ethereum's thriving L2 ecosystem, actually wild. Ethereum has already produced nine chains with gross profit, over $140 million in profit over the 12 months. Each chain is an economy. Ethereum is a federated union of economies with ETH as money, bullish ETH, bullish Ethereum, the new land of opportunity. So how this affects you, even though Ethereum isn't necessarily getting all the value capture as a lot of the L2s, the value is accruing on those L2s. These L2s and presumably the dApps that are being built on them will be here a long, long time as each chain is like an economy. We actually had Ryan and David on of the Bankless podcast. This episode drops this Saturday and they explained some of this. This is the role of centric roadmap. This has been the plan. The idea is when you take Ethereum's business model of you know execution fees being burned by EIP 1559, and you democratize that to a permissionless set of layer twos, all of a sudden, like you, all of these layer twos are super profitable. As a business, it's like the best business in the world is you just resell the be most valuable block space in the world, the Ethereum layer one, and you resell it as your layer two and you just pocket the difference. This is the most sustainable, replicatable, reproducible business model that has ever been found in crypto. And what do you get when you put all those properties together? You just get a complete blossoming of layer twos. Uh, and so this is where ETH, ETH turns into money uh, because the Ethereum monetary network, the Ethereum property uh, property rights network has this just like, you know, chain of chains, this literally internet of chains that all collapses back down to Ethereum. And the, the, the argument here is like, well, people can still say, well, at the end of the day, like the fundamentals, the fees, the deflationary nature of Ether is actually still just, that doesn't solve any of your problems. My response to that is like, actually, every single chain is on this roadmap. Bitcoin is on the roll-up centric roadmap. Solana is on the roll-up centric roadmap. Celestia is on the roll-up centric roadmap. And actually, credit to Celestia. Celestia is the only one that's on the roll-up centric roadmap and actually knows it. Whereas Bitcoin and Solana are on the roll-up centric roadmap and are in denial about it and think they're on something else. And so, like, there's if you re-roll the dice of crypto you will always get the roll-up centric roadmap. That's not Ethereum's invention. It's actually Ethereum's discovery. And Ethereum is just much further along on this whole entire path. Again, if you're wondering if Ethereum is a viable investment, does Ethereum really have a future in 2025? You do not want to miss this episode. Drops this Saturday. And looking at gaming altcoins, Superverse has started their season two. Basically, that means they're just integrating and partnering and being the glue of all these different separate thriving games. You can think of Super as the community coin of gaming, as the currency of gaming, the coin that is in every single game, regardless of whatever chain it's on, regardless of whatever stack it's using. This is how the community flows between all of the games. And it's effectively the gaming cult. And that's why if you go on the timeline, you'll see people going crazy, showing their love for Super, because in my opinion, it's the most fun way to get involved in all of the gaming projects. And it's a good first stop. And I believe it will be the first First stop for most people as they come into crypto gaming. And huge growth milestone for Primex Financial. I'm an advisor for this. It's a non-custodial spot margin trading protocol. And the news today is over 750,000 Primex Price Pulse players. Just as a reminder on what that is, feeling like you can predict the future of digital asset prices, now's your chance with a Telegram mini app. With Prime X Price Pulse, you can predict the future prices of Bitcoin, Ethereum, and more, guess up or down, and earn points for correct predictions. It's that easy. Many of you have obviously already started playing. I like this because there's no risk, no deposits, just fun and rewards. Link down below if you want to play, if you want to check it out. Also news for AI Crypto Humans, 
a project I recently invested in, humans.ai, is presenting human, their product, at the NVIDIA AI Summit. This is a major summit in India happening at the end of October. Awesome that humans will be a part of it. They are aiming to be the blockchain of AIs, meaning different quality AI projects over the next five, 10 years, one year, five year, 10 years, will be launching off them, that's the aim. But in October, they will be standing alongside industry giants like Microsoft Azure, Dell, Deloitte, HP, Lenovo, Google Cloud, etc. That's the video. My name's Austin. Like always, see you tomorrow.